Once upon tomorrow, a war raged. Both sides fought long, both sides fought hard. One side lived and bled and breathed. The other side didn't. But now, this war is almost post -trip. The humans, led by John Connor, storm the machine master control. Victory, ultimate victory, seems within sight. The humans breach master control's inner sanctum, just in time to see an 800 model Terminator vanish before their eyes. An answer to what this means is needed. An answer found by Connor's computer technicians. After a mishap or two, the device the Terminator stood in as it vanished was a time machine. The cyborg had gone back in time. Its mission? To kill John Connor's mother, Sarah. Connor took the news calmly. You'd almost think he expected it, one soldier whispered to another. Someone was needed, someone to follow the 800 model into the past, to save Sarah Connor. The volunteer? Sergeant Kyle Reese. Connor looks at Reese. The look is strange, warm, yet sad. Reese's destiny in times past would be one of danger, love, and death. What Reese wouldn't know, what John Connor didn't know to tell him, what Sarah Connor wouldn't know to warn her son, was that the 800 model that she and Reese encountered, the one that Connor's men saw disappear, was the second of two to be sent back in time on this offensive. The cyborg that Reese encountered used a page from a phone book to locate John Connor's mother. The other Terminator, the first one, went a different route. In the gun shop, where it would find weaponry and clothing, it used the store's computer modem and its own advanced knowledge of computer hardware to access the telephone company's records. Up to the minute records. The latest edition of the phone book was printed a month ago. Sarah Lang and John Connor have been married for 13 days. Tonight, in Los Angeles, much is happening. Shootouts, car chases, explosions, and neither of the Terminators has even started killing yet. A typical LA night, when a simple break-in goes unnoticed. Two weeks ago, before she married, this was the Sarah Lang Gallery. It doesn't take the cyborg long to pinpoint where its target is. A desk diary has Sarah's itinerary clearly marked. A late honeymoon, away from the smog. In San Francisco, the Terminator moves for the door, taking Sarah's Rolodex as a safeguard. At 94 miles per hour, both miles and hours speed by. Yeah, the doctor says it's nothing, but yeah, I'm going to get a second opinion. Hey! That's my coffee. You're drinking my coffee. You see that? I don't believe it. She's accelerating. Get ahead of her. Cut her off. She just landed herself in trouble. Big trouble. The sight of the station house door, the scents, the sounds, and the feel of the pavement. For Ellis Ruggles, a policeman in this precinct for 30 years, now retired, the sensations of old times return. He visits the place often, to chat, swap tales, and hear what's new. Of course, nothing ever is. The criminals may change, but the crimes don't. With life in the station house busily boring, boringly busy, or so Ruggles expects. What he finds instead is a madhouse. What's going on? Sorry, Ruggs, can't stop. Jerry. Gotta move, gotta move. Ben. Hey, Ruggles, get out of the way. Dan. Yeah? What is going on? I wish we had an answer. Killing's all over, a nightclub shot to hell. No arrests, lots of questions. And get this, someone killed a precinct. What do you mean, killed a precinct? Everyone in the 53rd, every cop, all dead. Only suspect is one Kyle Reese. That's who everybody's looking for. 
But one guy? It had to be more than one guy. Like I say, lots of questions to be answered. That's why everyone's acting crazy. Yeah, it's quite a mystery. And somehow, it all ties in with the Sarah Connor. She's missing too. We think Reese has got her. If she's dead, then she's the third. Two other Sarah Connors have been killed already. Lucky the fourth is out of town. Very lucky. Fourth? Where's the fourth? Yeah, she's on her honeymoon. Maybe that saved her life. Where out of town? Frisco, which is funny, because there's a report of a police car shot up on the Pacific Coast Highway. About halfway there, both cops dead. Didn't have time to radio in a description of who killed them. It's like, nowhere is safe. It's like, everything's gone crazy. When did it happen? Early hours, five, six o'clock this morning. Like I say, it's crazy. Hey, Rox, where you going? A city of hills, ornate architecture, and cool, salty breezes from the bay. San Francisco. Good morning, Mrs. Connor. Mm. Good morning, Mr. Connor. God, Sarah, I love you. Romantic San Francisco. We've got work to do, Peanut. Yeah, I know. I thought it was over for us as well. Guess you're never too old for surprises. Michael Connor nurses thoughts and beer. The beer grows warm as Michael's thoughts turn cold to the concept of marriage, his marriage. But he loves Sarah, and Sarah loves him, so much so that she changed her name and the name of her business, eager to proclaim to the world that she was his wife. The problem is Sarah's wealth. Michael hates money and fears how it corrupts creativity, his creativity. But he loves Sarah. But marriage, he's too young to be married. But he loves Sarah. But he feels trapped. But, 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 Michael sighs, beer refreshing him not at all. Alex? Yes, it's me. Who did you think? Anyway, Michael's not back yet. I think he went to buy me something, but he's been gone for hours. I don't know where. Anyway, it's getting too late. Our plans are starting to fall apart. For today, best to wait. You can kill my husband tomorrow. Hello? I'm in room 828. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going out for an hour. The room's free if you want to clean it. Room 828. Thanks for letting me know. I'll do your room next. You said 826? No, 828. Michael and Sarah Connor. Sensors react in an instant. It's ready to fire. To kill. Fisherman's Wharf. <laughs> Tourist traps, what I'd call it. That's her. She tried to throttle me. Wanted to know one guest room number. Connor. Drive, drive, drive! Transport required. All available units to the Beaumont Hotel. Shots fired. Multiple fatalities reported. Repeat. All available units. The Beaumont? That's just around the corner. Transport obtained. The storefronts of Hate Street may change, but the attitude here is ever the same. With the young and hip trying to recreate the summer of love, 
and the middle-aged burnouts who don't realize it ever ended. Alex Gander's workplace is above the shops of hate. Since 68, he's been here. His urban sculptures nurtured, inspired by the energy the street gives him. And the studio is rent controlled. He'd order pizza, but that was only minutes ago. Delivery's never this fast. Alex, Al open the door for God's sake. Oh, Alex. Hey, hey, Sarah, baby, what's the matter? What happened? A woman with gun tried to kill me. Kill. I couldn't escape her. All those people. Hey, 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 hush now, hush. Dead. Shot. Dead. It's Michael. He must know what we're planning. And he hired that woman to get me. She was unbelievable. She jumped onto the elevator. No, 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 no. Relax, honey. You're hysterical. Michael doesn't know anything. It's we who know. That his parents were wealthy, that they died and left him millions. Look, you're coming unglued. We can't have that. Not now. Not when we're so close to getting so much. Just think about it all for a moment. Look, Michael's ashamed of the money. Thinks it'll corrupt his art. The cash is his secret. He didn't use it or want it. He's lived rough, a typical starving artist. See, he's from the East. So when he blew into LA, nobody there knew his past, his wealth, not even you. Look, if it hadn't been for that old newspaper you chanced across, we never would have known. I mean, that's the beauty of what we're doing. His death will have no apparent motive. And you, everybody thinks you're rich. They don't know the galleries in the red. They don't know about the losses, the, the, the bad investments. Or the sculptor who spends faster than I can earn. How it seems is that you're a wealthy art hag who's fallen for a poor second-rate painter. My God, Sarah. Mr. Connor, your wife's alive. Alive but in danger. What? Who are you? Someone you'd better trust. Where are we going? Oh, you need to be on the lookout. Where the short waves tell us. Anyway, no one knows about Michael's wealth. No one knows we know. Certainly not Michael. And even if he were aware of our plan, he wouldn't know how to hire a killer. I mean, his head's in his art, and you, and little else. I don't know who that woman was. She could have been anybody. A, a maniac, maybe. Everything's fine, Sarah. You'll see. Tomorrow, you and hubby go walking. Newlywed sightsee. I'll follow you and wait till you're somewhere deserted. Then I'll slit his throat, steal your purse and his wallet as a motive for the attack. When the police question you, you describe Michael's killer as looking completely different from me. You, the only witness, the heartbroken wife mourning her poor, penniless, dead husband. A wife who'd been so eager to make Michael's name hers, to share her life with him. You wait as long as it takes for the lawyers to tell you that you're a millionaires. You act astounded, and we live happily ever after. Well, that'll be the pizza. It's Canadian bacon and pineapple, your favorite. Alphabetically, he was the fourth Frisco-based person in Sarah's Rolodex. Unfortunate for Alex and for the three before it. Sarah's gotten far with her life, this due to her one great ability, thinking fast and on her feet. Now she's desperate as well. The ideas come all the faster. There would be too many questions if Sarah were found here. Best to get away. 
Goodbye, Alex. It occurs to her in the street. The gas. She thought she might need it, so she turned it on. Leaving, she'd forgotten to turn it off. Oh, God! The saying is wrong. The devil, apparently, is not a woman. <laughs>